Good afternoon. Before I begin, I would just like to thank Cindy for taking good care of Ray during his difficult final years. All of us who cared about Ray are forever in your debt for that. Thank you. My name is Dan Frazier. I am one of Ray's four children uh, from his marriage to Gail Nelson. My biological father is Will Orr, so actually I'm Ray's stepson, but he legally adopted me and he raised me like a son. When Ray met my mom, I was maybe three or four years old, and my brother Steve was about two years younger. Many guys, when they meet a woman with two young children, would run the other way. Ray was just a young guy, still in his 20s, just starting out in his career, not a rich guy, but for whatever reason, he chose to dive into that relationship and take on that responsibility. My two sisters, Gail and Courtney, came along soon after. So one of my first experiences of Ray was this selfless act of charity and benevolence in which he takes on this burden of family responsibilities. He was always was he always a model of selfless charity and benevolence? No, <coughs> of course not. But in this case, his decision to be charitable changed my life, my brother's life and my mother's life, and of course, the lives of my sisters. I credit Ray with teaching me many life lessons, and together with my mother, instilling in me many of my better qualities, hard work, perseverance, honesty, studiousness, creativity, a sense of humor, a love of reading, and more. Ray and my mother divorced around the time that I graduated from high school. Nonetheless, thanks to Ray's financial assistance, I was able to go to college at UCLA. I have a lot in common with Ray. We were both Boy Scouts as teens. We both delivered newspapers. We both mowed lawns for extra spending money. We both collected stamps when we were younger. After college, I worked a variety of odd jobs, but I ended up working in the newsroom of a small newspaper, helping to lay out the weather page, processing letters to the editor, and even writing articles about the local arts and entertainment scene. Later, after I got married, I worked with my then wife to publish a monthly <clears throat> community newspaper out of our living room. We did that for two years. We have been divorced for several years now. As an adult, Ray and I sometimes talked about the sad state of newspapers in the internet age. He lamented the younger generation's lack of interest in newspapers. Like Ray, I have a love of reading and I'm a regular newspaper reader. So while I was emotionally closer to my mother growing up, looking back, I recognized that there was a certain intellectual kinship that I shared with Ray. While I may have some things in common with Ray, <coughs> I'm also a very different person. He was a Republican, I'm a Democrat, he was religious, I'm an atheist. He loves sports, I don't have any interest in sports. He loved to hunt, I'm not a hunter. None of this is Ray's fault. He tried, <laughs> and I know he loved me despite my flaws. I loved him too. I have some fond memories of growing up with Ray. I remember when I was very young, sitting in bed with him as he read to me from a big picture book of children's stories. I remember when we lived in a farmhouse in Georgia. There was a forest behind the house. He took my brother and me into the forest and he set up a rope swing over a creek. We would cling to that <coughs> rope while he pushed us out over that little creek. When you're five or six years old, that sort of thing is a big thrill. I remember one memorable Halloween at our little Georgia farmhouse when the great pumpkin came pounding on the door. It was Ray, of course, with a lighted pumpkin on his head. But we didn't know that. We were just little kids. We were scared to death as we tried to help our mother hold the door shut while this monster was roaring and banging against it. Another time, I remember we had visited Disney World Telling us a few weeks later how nice it was to get a phone call, Disney World, Donald Duck. 
Of course, Ray was not home at that moment. He was great with the buddy voices. I was convinced that Donald Duck had really called. I was just flabbergasted. When Ray got home, I was very excited to tell him who had called. And he was very excited to hear all about it. He could be a stern and intimidating father. <coughs> I remember when I was about five years old, he would sometimes get mad because I left my toys in the front yard. He would say, I don't want this to happen again in the future. Do you understand? And I would nod solemnly. Only I didn't understand. What was the future, I wondered. I had no idea what the word meant or where the future was. <laughs> I remember that he got on my case one time when a teacher wrote on my report card that I needed to spend more time learning the multiplication tables. He got very upset. But you know what? Ask me what eight times eight is. I know it. I learned it that day. And I never forgot it. He always wanted his kids to be better people that he knew they could be. That's what a good father does, right? He would want us all to be the best people we can be. And I know he was always trying to make, always trying to be a better person. <coughs> My mom was always fixing up, up the houses uh, that we lived in. Ray was often enlisted to help in those projects. I'm sure they made some money fixing up old houses and then selling them. But those home renovations were also a source of friction. Ray often complained <coughs> that he did not really like spending so many of his weekends painting the house or sandblasting that old swimming pool or whatever the latest project was. He wanted to enjoy his weekends. He would rather be playing charades with the kids or attending a Spurs basketball game or doing just about anything else. <laughs> he, he helped with his share of home renovation projects, but he was not a natural born home renovator. With all due respect to Cindy, who has had a long and loving marriage to Ray, I think that Ray also had a very special relationship with my mother. I remember the time that he bought her an ice cream cone, and he told the person behind the counter to put another scoop on top, and another one, and another one. Pretty soon it had like eight or 10 scoops of different colored ice cream. My mom could barely keep the thing balanced in her hand. I remember just as we were about to get in the car, the top half of the tower of ice cream fell off. Now there was this big multicolored ice cream splattered on the pavement, and we all just laughed. I, re I remember how he bought Jaguar XKE. This is a classic sports car with a huge engine and a long hood. Ostensibly, it was a gift for my mother but I'm not sure she ever drove it. <laughs> Mostly, it sat in the garage. He probably drove it more than she did. For his punishment, when we moved, he had to drive that car from San Antonio to Miami. I went with him. I was maybe 10 or 12. I say it was his punishment because that car had no air conditioning. And that big engine gets really hot. After a while, it kind of cooks your feet. So we were driving through Louisiana and Mississippi with the windows all the way down and the engine so loud that we had to shout if we wanted to talk to each other. As an adult, my conversations with Ray tended to be few and far between. But I got a flurry of calls from him two or three years before he died. He started calling me almost every day. The conversations tended to be rather repetitive. I quickly realized that this change in behavior was a byproduct of the dementia he was experiencing. One of the things that Ray talked to me about in those final conversations was how he wanted me to find a girlfriend. <laughs> I, I agreed that this was a good idea, but when I did not get a girlfriend right away, he said that if I did not get a girlfriend soon, he was going to make me pay him back for the family SUV that had been stolen while I was attending <laughs> night classes at San Antonio College. These were sensitive topics for me. It, it seemed like maybe he was losing his sense of what was appropriate conversation. Still, I know he wanted the best for me. And if he were with us here today, I think I know what he would say. He would say, Dan, do you have a girlfriend yet? <laughs> so ladies, I'll be around afterwards. <laughs> Thank you.